Kaya and the murder trial are brought to a close in Where the Crawdads Sing. We analyze that major twist as well as other parts of the movie's conclusion. There are a few aspects of the movie's conclusion to delve deeper into, such as Kaya's attraction to feathers and how she killed Chase, since this isn't shown in the movie. Here is a breakdown of the resolution and the underlying significance of the story's themes. Why Kaya murdered Chase, the revelation that Kaya really did murder Chase, may come as a surprise to those who haven't read the novel. Kaya was a wild woman who had a controlling father as a child. She was victimized by Chase, who also deceived her and abused her sexually. She repeatedly asked him to leave her alone, but his ego-driven toxic masculinity would not budge. In the end, Kaya killed Chase because she didn't want to live in terror or go back to the things she had experienced as a child. She had personal experience with the psychological and bodily harm that came from living with an abusive man. Kaya wouldn't permit herself to make the same error again. Especially not after she finally had her life in order and a sense of freedom. Furthermore, Kaya believed her acts were essential for her own survival and perceived Chase as a predator. Kaya felt no safety from the townspeople, who detested her and were eager to point the finger at her, as a result, she had to defend herself. She was brought up in the marsh, so she was at one with nature and didn't necessarily follow human morals or laws. One can only speculate as to how Kaya actually committed the murder. Tom Milton testified at Kaya's trial that she wasn't even in town when he was killed. She would have had to get on the bus from another town, kill Chase in the night, likely by pushing him off the tower with the loose grate, and take another bus at 2 a.m. back to her hotel. In the book, it's at least revealed there was someone in disguise on the bus. This mysterious figure was probably Kaya taking the bus back and forth without being noticed. Since Where the Crawdads Sing never reveals the exact details of Kaya's actions that night, Milton's explanation is likely what happened. How important crawdads are explained, like crawfish, crawdads are aquatic invertebrates that resemble little shelled lobsters. Where the crawdads sing opens with Kaya remarking on how people frequently overlook what lies beneath the shell. She has, in many ways, been withdrawn, and the residents of the town have both lost track of her and the fact that she has feelings. To that end, Kaya essentially hides away from the locals because they don't like her and she prefers to keep to herself. Crawdads being the title of Owen's book is significant because it's a reference to what Kaya's mother always told her to go deep into the woods and listen to what nature had to tell her. By doing so, Kaya became more attuned to nature, always watching creatures and learning about their habits, why they did the things they did to survive. While the crawdads don't actually sing, the lesson passed down from Kaya's mother ensured her survival and allowed her to become one with her surroundings. She was nature herself and the crawdads are a representation of that, as well as Kaya's journey throughout the film. Why Kaya Loves Feathers So Much Throughout the film, Kaya constantly finds feathers, often a representation of a piece of nature that many overlook and pay no mind to. This parallels Kaya's relationship to the townspeople, who don't truly see her, and have discarded her as an outsider they don't want to be associated with. To Kaya, feathers are beautiful, each unique to. She draws them, marvels at them, and brings them home with her. Crucially, feathers are of the utmost importance to her because it's a representation of her long-standing relationship with Tate. It's how their friendship began. Tate would bring her feathers if he found them, he knew how much they meant to Kaya. Eventually, they developed a romantic relationship, one that always involved the exchange of feathers as a sign of affection and communication. What causes Kaya's dad to eventually leave the marsh? Kaya lived alone with her violent father for a while, after her entire family abandoned her when she was a little child. However, like her mother and brothers before him, Kaya's father eventually departs the marsh as well. It appeared for a while that Kaya's father would stay with her in the marsh because he had nowhere else to go. He simply never reappears on screen in Where the Crawdads Sing, and the plot conveniently forgets about him. While he isn't depicted walking away like Kaya's mother and siblings do, he ultimately decides to leave the marsh in the movie after reading his wife's letter announcing her intention to take the kids back with her. He burns everything she ever owned and gets drunk, presumably leaving not long after, perhaps coming to unverbalized realizations about himself and his life. 
The letter also comes after he has a brief moment with Kaya about his time in the military during World War II, which is presumably why he became an alcoholic. However, the moment is cut short by the letter's arrival, and he quickly reverts back to his angry, abusive self. Nature is an important element of where the crowded sing, to the point that it's a character all its own. The marsh surrounds, protects, and comforts Kaya. It is her refuge, her home, her love. She is nature and nature is her, and she respects it like no other. The ending of Where the Crawdads Sing is Kaya returning things to their natural state. Killing Chase was a necessity in her eyes, an act she mimicked from the animals who would destroy their prey in a bid to survive. To that end, Where the Crawdads Sing is very much about survival, a lesson to never underestimate those who seem meek and shy. Kaya was a social outcast, but Chase was a predator to her. He thought he could continue to mistreat Kaya, harming her because he could get away with it. But Kaya saw herself as part of the nature around her, and, when action is taken against her, commits to making things right by fighting back as a prey, would a predator that hunts them. Aside from that, where the crawdads sing makes it a point to mention how Kaya wouldn't be believed, and likely blamed, when it came to her assault, suggesting that people are not truly interested in protecting or helping Kaya like nature had always done, 